Hello crafty friends and welcome to another white paper scraps video. In my last white paper scraps video I used my medium size scraps and today these are the four large scraps that I set to one side in that video. Once again I am going to tape these together to work on them in one go as one sheet of paper. This is just washi from my use it or lose it washi tape box. I am going to trim off this raggedy bit because I think that's going to get in the way. As you can see, this white paper scrap is already coloured a sort of bluey green. And I think that's because I accidentally put it on top of a baby wipe that I'd used to wipe up some ink and it's soaked in. So that just gives me a jumping off point for today's card. So for my colours, I'm going to use Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide, Cracked Pistachio Distress Oxide and Paradise Teal Archival Ink, which is permanent. And I'm going to use this stamp set again and I've got this grungy, tiny dot, like almost linen texture. And I think we'll just use the Archival Ink on this. And make sure every scrap gets some ink. So that'll do for the permanent ink. So that's not gonna shift when I do my next step, which is to smush on some cracked pistachio. So I pop some on my mat, gonna mix it with water to make a paint, and then add my smushing. This is one of my very old ink pads which I got, I think, more or less when Distress Oxides first came out. It needs re-inking. I do have the re-ink, I just haven't got round to doing it yet. So that's enough of the cracked pistachio. I'm now going to smush on some peacock feathers. And for this, I'm going to use my bubble wrap smusher. I haven't dried this, so there may be some mixing and mingling of the cracked pistachio and peacock feathers, but that's fine. So as not to waste this ink, I'm going to pick it up with a paintbrush and spatter it on. And now I will dry this with my hairdryer. So we've stamped and smushed and now we're going to stencil. And I'm going to bring the cracked pistachio back in and use this large kind of circular stamp, no, stencil, to add a bit of stenciling. I apologise if my talking's a bit stilted today. The neighbours have just started doing their DIY again. So I've got power tools starting up every five seconds. And again, just like we did in the last video, I'm going to use white acrylic paint and my brayer to marry everything together to unify it and make it all kind of the same saturation level I guess or the same value rather and to bring in a bit of shimmer and shine I'm going to use this teal metallic from my Prima metallic accents hybrid palette it's a mix of my favorites from the original palette and the pastel palette I always say that now because people always ask what these are so we'll just spatter that on. We're not going to get much contrast with this. This is just to add shimmer and shine and it tones in well with everything that's already there. Right, it's time to dry it again. So I'm really pleased with that. It's got a nice shimmer and shine to it. Nice mix of colours and pattern. I can take the washi off now and get it ready for the next stage. Obviously, you don't have to have the same inks as me, the same stamps as me, the same stencils as me. Use what you have and create your own unique mixed media scraps. So with these scraps, I'm going to use this stitched tag die. Now, this is, I think is a very old tag from the works. I don't think they sell them anymore. In fact, they don't sell much in the way of dies anymore. But you use whatever tag die or shape die that you want. 
Right, I managed to get eight little mixed media tags out of those scraps, plus three little bits left over, which I might be able to use on my cards. So as usual, I'm gonna make one card for you on camera, and then at the end of the video, show you the other cards that I've made with these tags. The first thing I want to do is take my tag and go around the edges with a little blush or peacock feathers, just to darken the edges a bit. It gives it a little bit of definition and the colour is also kind of picked up a bit by the stitching and it brings the stitching out a bit. Now I'm going to add this to my card panel. I've got a stitched rectangle panel here in smooth white cardstock. I was thinking of having it on here like this with just a little bit of a border. I want to preserve some white space here. I think that's nice and straight. Just press it down with a bit of non-stick deli paper just to keep everything clean. And that can go on my card blank now. So I've picked some die cuts out to go on top. I've got this little Polaroid style frame that I've cut in white. And I've got a stitched hexagon frame for something a bit floaty in the background, but it's still in keeping with the angular nature of the tag and the card and it's got stitching so we've got stitching on the panel stitching on the tag and stitching on the hexagon so i'm going to layer these somewhere like that maybe and then i've cut this butterfly die which is quite delicate and ornate out of gold glitter cardstock and i think i'm just going to pop that on there something like that to attach the vellum I'm going to use this crafters companion tape runner because it's really good at not showing through vellum and I want this on here straight for this I'm just going to use my regular high tack glue and put little dots around the frame I'll just press it down a bit on the mat to get rid of excess glue so it doesn't splurge all over my tag here and now for my butterfly. I'm going to stick its body down, but also put a little bit of glue around the edge of the wings. So I've decided not to back it with vellum because there's already a bit of vellum there and I think it stands out nicely against everything. Right, I'm happy with that now. I think we need a sentiment. For my sentiment, I'm going to take one of my thin white paper scraps that we set aside for just this occasion and I'm going to use this stitched rectangle die, again keeping the stitching theme going. And to help me get everything lined up when it comes to stamping, I'm going to create a jig. So I'm going to cut my rectangle from this bit of card Pop that in there and hold it in place with my magnets and then put the die cut in get it in exactly the right place and now take my sentiment it's a little thank you in capital letters and I've put it up this end here because I'm going to shorten this in a minute I'll pick it up and I'm going to ink it with paradise teal because we've got paradise teal on our tag and I'm going to do that twice because I think it needs it and all I need to do is take my die, line it up where I want the end to cut, pop a bit of washi on, and then just put the end of the die in my folder and run it through my Gemini Me. So now I've got a nice short sentiment, a perfect size with stitching all the way around. And my thank you could go over here, I think. And to embellish it a little bit, I've got the scraps that were left over when I cut the dies and I'm going to put them on here. And I've also got a bit of gold glitter cardstock and I'm going to run that through my cuttle bag and get some little circles that I can glue on. So I've got a nice pile of circles here, which we can dot around just to bring in a bit of extra energy. Here we are then, a finished card. I'm really pleased with it. I love the colour scheme. I like all the visual texture on the tag and the gold really brings in that shimmer and shine that I enjoy. 
do stick around for another couple of minutes because I'll show you the other cards that I've made with these tags. So here's the card that I've just made for you and here are seven others. They're all very similar to each other in that I decided not to put the whole tag on my card front but just a partial tag coming in from the side. But I did include the vellum hexagon, the white Polaroid frame, the same sentiment and the gold and mixed media dots. What I'm going to do when I finish filming is add some crystal glaze to the dots to give them a bit of dimension and gloss. But each card has the tag coming in from a different position and each card has a different gold glitter butterfly on. So that's card number two with the tag here. Card number three has the tag up here. Some of my butterflies as well, I'm going to put some maybe Morning Dew Nouveau drops on to give them a dimensional body. Some of them I don't think need it, but some of them do. So I'll take some photos once I've done that very last stage. And here we have the tag coming in from the bottom. It's a bit similar in position to this one, except that it's coming in from the bottom rather than the whole tag being on the card. Here we have it coming in from the top. This one's coming in here. I'm going to die cut, I think, a white butterfly body and put that on there because it hasn't even got antenna, that one. So do check out the photos in a tick because I'll have that there. This one has the tag coming in from the bottom right. And this is a bit of a different butterfly die cut. It's a sort of side view butterfly. So I thought this went well here because the butterfly looks like it's flying off in that direction. With these kind of butterflies, you can angle them uh, any which way you like and it looks like they're flying in that direction but with these kind of butterflies where you've kind of got that side view you need to place them in the in the most sensible place as it were and this is the last one again it's a side view butterfly so it needed to be flying right so I put it to the left so it's got space in front of it to fly right there we go eight cards made with mixed media tags that were made from was it four large white paper scraps i do hope you've enjoyed the video today and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with whatever you have in your stash as well as your scraps if it has please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments subscribe ring the notification bell all that good stuff and i'll see you back here very soon Thanks for watching. Bye for now.